Initial designs for Pegasus were created through a collaboration between real spacecraft engineers and the art department on the production. Spacecraft designers from EADS Astrium then helped us turn these rough drawings into engineering designs that our animators could work with. Hi, Pegasus Commander Tom Kirby here. Halfway to Mars and time for our regular Q&A. This week's topic is our interplanetary home, Pegasus. I've got the email address on the screen here, so keep those questions coming. Okay, first question is, how big is Pegasus? Well, you could fit in 12 football fields end to end, so pretty big. But it was science that dictated the look of Pegasus, the distances it would have to travel, and the environments it was going to in the story, flying past the sun and crashing into the top of planetary atmospheres. But above everything else, Pegasus had to keep the crew healthy for the six years that this mission would take. Well, space is a kind of naturally pretty hostile environment for human beings. So you, the first thing you need is shelter. You need shelter from radiation, shelter from the vacuum, shelter from the, the temperature extremes. That's the first thing. Then beyond that, you've got to have food, you've got to have water, you've got to have power to run things, and you've got to have an environment which is kind of keeps you healthy and keeps you sane. Pretty much the same sort of things you need on Earth, but obviously it's much more difficult to provide in space. This is a mission like no other. You're not packing just for a, a drive up the motorway, you're packing for an expedition of six years in duration where you need to take everything with you and it's got to be right there in the vehicle before you go and it's got to last for all that time. If you don't, you're going to run out of food or fuel or power or light or heat and your mission's going to be over. That in itself represents a massive technological challenge. Traditionally, uh, spacemen have uh, eaten things like this. Everybody knows it's either freeze-dried or, um, or it's some form of, uh, you know, rehydratable um, mixture. This is uh, apple puree. Um, or or in, in the early days of Apollo, it was all out of tubes, a bit like, a bit like toothpaste. That will keep people alive, but, it, but it's not very um, stimulating. Uh, and one of the important things for a long duration space mission, if you're going to be away for years and years and years, is that uh, you, you keep trying to keep the crew happy. And one of the ways to keep people happy is to give them nice, interesting food. So obviously, the Pegasus mission is going to have fuel dumps and food dumps along the way, so they can, they can pick up food there. But I think in order to keep them happy, uh, to keep them stimulated, it, it, they're going to need to grow some of their own food actually on board the spacecraft. And how about the food, Nina? Is it fresh or frozen? A bit of both, actually. One important thing will be the recycling of water, though. Um, they're going to have to have water to drink, water to wash with. It's going to be very, very difficult to transport enough water for the astronauts to use. Yes, viewers, I've been drinking his urine for the last <laughs> six months. According to my calculations, uh, they're going to need to take about uh, 60 tonnes of, of, of dried food, 300 tonnes of, of water, uh, something of the order of 150 tonnes of oxygen uh, in order to, to keep them alive uh, throughout the mission. We take a lot for granted on Earth. and We have more than just air to breathe. Um, we have warmth, we have food, we have water. Um, we also have quite significant protection from radiation. Um, in, the, in, the, in the atmosphere itself, uh, but also in the magnetic field that surrounds the Earth. Once you get out beyond the Earth's magnetic field, you're open to much, much more damage from radiation from a number of sources, and you need to protect your crews against that. And how you do that is, is really a big problem. The longer they're out there, the more radiation they're exposed to. The more radiation they're exposed to, the more tissue damage they're going to get. There's two main sources of radiation. Uh, there's solar radiation, the radiation that comes from the sun, and um, what we call uh, um, cosmic rays, which originate outside the solar system. Every 22 years, the sun becomes very active, and throws out a lot of radiation. But even during relatively quiet periods, our nearest star can still hurl out dangerous levels of charged particles. If you're on a spacecraft at that time, uh, that's a very unhealthy uh, 
time, time to be there because the, the, the radiation is quite capable of killing you. So if you're on an interplanetary mission, such as on Pegasus, you've either got to have some sort of shielding or you have to have a, what they call a storm cellar, uh, an area which is specially shielded. And when the radiation alarm goes off, everybody just drops what they're doing and, and bundles inside there for the duration of, of, of the solar event. But there's one place that they are going which is potentially even more deadly. Jupiter has a very strong magnetic field which allows it to trap charged particles so the space surrounding Jupiter is very very high in radiation and Io where, where the Pegasus uh, astronauts are going lies within that radiation field so uh, they're going to have to have good radiation shielding to protect them when they go to Io.